Welcome everybody. We'll have a talk by, by Alexander Savio about brain imaging in Python. Please welcome Alexander. Thank you, for, thank you everyone for coming. Um, good morning. Um, I'm Alexander Savio. I work in the uh, Klinikum Herz de Aiza uh, in Munich. Um, so uh, uh, the outline of the, the talk is going to be, first I'm going to int introduce the NiPy tools for neuroimaging. Um, I'm going to give a, a, brief short, a brief introduction to most of them. Um, then I'm going to explain a bit of uh, what is a functional MRI. Um, I'm going to explain a bit uh, the a public database uh, that the, um, that's available to do this kind of experiments, and I'm going to show a bit how how you can uh, preprocess fMRI uh, with the the NiPy tools. So, NiPy uh, is the is a is the name of a community. It's a com community of people that do neuroimaging and neuroscience with Python. Um, it's also a module, so there's also a module called Ni uh, NiPy. So if you go to nipy.org, you have a list, a nice list of uh, the modules available for neuroimaging. Um, so the first one I would say is uh, NiBabel, which allows you to open different types of neuroimaging file formats. Uh, so you have you have um, I/O functions for uh, analyze uh, gift, gifty nifty. So these are uh, di these are different types of neuroimaging files. Then you have uh, NiPy, which is a set of tools to process anatomical and functional uh, MRI images. Um, well, then uh, there is NiPipe, uh, which is um, which is a, a tool that allows you to uh, define uh, pipelines f to process neuroimages. It it provides a a common interface uh, to many other tools available elsewhere. So usually people do neuroimaging through command line or MATLAB. And NiPipe allows you to put all these tools together, so it's very handy. Uh, then there's NiTime, which has uh, many uh, algorithms for time series analysis, and uh, DiPy, which is to process uh, diffusion imaging. So when you see these images of uh, fiber tracts of the brain. It's with uh, diffusion, so this this is a nice labor, uh, nice module to process this kind of of data. And then you have Nilearn, which is uh, I think the new the newest uh, module, which is done by the keynote speaker of this morning. Um, so it's it provides fast um, fast and easy methods to do statistics with the with neuroimaging, and it uses scikit-learn. So, what is functional MRI? So, functional MRI is uh, uh, uses the uh, the bold oops, sorry the bold um, the bold signal, which is blood oxygenation level dependent, and it's um, it takes. Um, so it uses the difference in, uh, in magnetization of the blood flow when you have oxygen and not oxygen in, in, the, in the blood. So this allows you to um, more or less measure where the activity in the brain is going on because neuro, neuro, neuron activity uh, needs oxygen to work. So yeah. It, this has some problems, but it works. Oops. Mm, 
So the idea is that you you acquire one whole volume. Um, sorry, I'm trying to show the other image. <coughs> so the idea is that you um, you acquire one whole volume each time, and you have usually you take uh, every two seconds you take one whole volume of the brain, and uh, the functional image is a is a time series of volumes of brain volumes, and uh, so well there is a international neuroimaging data sharing initiative, um, which which has many interesting databases uh, with different uh, sets of um, patients. Uh, so you have patients with um, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, autism, and well, they are, they, not all of them have fMRI, but most of them, and you just, you can download them and start playing with this kind of of, um, of images. So I'm going to show a, a bit of how um, rest in a state of MRI is pre-processed. So here I have a, a nifty file. Um, this is the extension of a zipped a nifty file. Um, so I use a nibubble to to load this this image, so I use uh, nib, uh, load the lo load function, and this is um, this is the image data with some headers. So um, the header is necessary to to uh, to put to put the brain in the correct uh, coordinate system. Well, he's, here's a more clean list of the header, this is a long list. Uh, you have, for example, the, the type of each voxel, uh, the, um, the, first, the, the first three dimensions, uh, the temporal dimension, so this is 240 volumes of this size. And, um, and here it says that each each voxel has three millimeters, so it's three by three by three point six, and so on. Um, so uh, this image image object, object has a get data um, function, which uh, stores the, the the this volume from the from the image from the from the file. So this this is a NumPy array. And uh, it has the shape that that we saw before in the header file. Um, so, Nylearn, apart from the statistics part, uh, it has a very nice uh, has some very nice plotting tools that they work very well with the with the IPython notebook. So, I import uh, on the plotting submodule. I use the index image function to to pick the first volume of the of the resting resting image, and I use this plot plotnet function just to show you the for how is the first volume of the functional image. Um, I tried to plot the whole time series in a loop, but I couldn't do it with um, matplotlib. I was I heard I could use um, bokeh, but well, I'm using a tool that I I work I daily work with, and here this is the the loop of the functional image. As you can see, there's a, a bit of movement, there's a bit uh, so there's a bit of noise. So this image before doing any statistics with it, I need to to correct for motion, for uh, slice timing, and um, is smooth it, so I'm going to show a little bit about about these steps. 
So is last time in motion correction is the first step uh, for for this this type of images. Um, the, uh, usually you need to know what was the, the slice order of the acquisition. So for each volume, the scanner acquired, it acquires one slice per moment, so the slices have different times. And since this is a, a time-related uh, data, you need, to, you need to shift these slices in the correct order to make this uh, this image look look better, and so this is dependent on the scanner. So, for example, you can get uh, for this type of image, this light order is like this. So it's uh, alternating. Um, so first it does the uh, um, even so the uh, the um, odd the odd uh, slices and then the, the even ones, and, altern and uh, it alternates. Um, so I, to, to do this uh, motion correction, oh, sorry. I, I'm using here Nip NiPy. It has, um, in this long submodule, uh, you have the space-time realign uh, uh, class that allows you to to do motion correction and slice timing correction. So here, here I, I create an instance of this object, of this class. I give the, my functional image. I say the repetition time, which is also a scanning parameter. So this means that uh, it's two seconds for each volume. Uh, slice time is, is, a, is the name of a function to to say what is the slice order to acquire uh, to acquire each slice, so the, so this class is going to search for the the function and apply to to the image in order to to build the slice order um, the slice order list to perform the correction. So I run this, and well, in this case, it takes around 10 minutes. Um, I could use also joblib to cache these, the result of this. This is a very nice tool to, uh, joblib is, is something very used in, in neuroscience to, to store the, uh, the steps that, this, that are performed in, uh, in ex an experiment. So when I, so when this, this uh, process finishes, I get the, a result which has the same shape as before, but now it's, uh, it looks better. So I save it. I use a uh, NiPy save image to, to save this in, in this path. Um, and, well, I could, well, uh, let, so first I'm going, to, I'm going to check the transformation that was performed. So realigner is my fit, my, the fit class where I um, that I used to to correct the, the image, and I pick the trans, the transformations. And for each transformation, I only I'm only picking the translation part of the trans, the transformation. So it's an affine transformation. Yeah. So here I'm only using the I'm going to plot the translations. So I have for each dimension x, y, z. I have the translation that was applied uh, to each volume uh, of the of the resting state image. So this is the the affine function, the affine matrix of the first transformation. Okay, um, and let's check how it looks like now. So, well, it's not very easy to see the differences, but if you check on the top, uh, top right there, you'll see that there's much less movement than before. Um, well, you have, you have to trust me. So, 
So, well, with fMRI, there are many paradigms. In fact, in the, in the public data sets I, I showed you before, the, you, have, um, you have task fMRI, where you, you put the subject in the scanner and you ask, you ask the, the subject to perform different tasks and you get different uh, signals depending on the task and you can do statistics to see what areas are activating uh, according to, the, to these tasks. But also, uh, <coughs> sorry. But also uh, a very, well, so this is, another paradigm is rest in a state of fMRI, fMRI which you just leave the patient inside the scanner, you ask them to not think in anything, and, and you filter the image to only measure a low frequency a signal um, in order to see how the brain uh, is working in rest. So with this kind of, of measures, you can, you can uh, do some diagnosis. It's, um, so it's a very interesting uh, modality to, to work with. I'm going to talk a bit about connectivity later. Um, so the first thing you have to do with this kind of um, with this kind of images, you have to do a, ba a bandpass filter. You have to filter it uh, with free, uh, with a low pass. Uh, filter of 0 0.08 um, hertz and a high pass frequency of 0 0.01. Uh, I have this function here. I, uh, I think I imported it from, well, I copied it from uh, NiPipe, which is something I'm not showing how to use here. So I just copied, copied the, the code of the function to show you, but it's too complex for it. For now, um, so I applied this function to my to my realigned motion corrected functional um, image. I save it using the to file name of a function which comes with the with the, with Nibabel objects. So this this function is returning me a Nibabel object uh, object a nifty image. And I use the two file name function to f to save it. It's quite quite handy. And now let's look how it let's see how it looks now. So it's a much messier, but you see you see some uh, low well it's a low frequency noise there. Uh, no, not noise. It's activity. I threw that the, I could mask. This uh, the brain area to to get only the the voxels that are from the brain, and well, this is so you can see well you cannot see something happening here, but uh, this is how how these images look like when in the, in the middle of the process. So. Um, Nylon allows you to, to calculate brain masks, and uh, it has a, uh, this compute EPI mask to, to calculate uh, brain mask from, the, from fMRI. <coughs> and well, it does quite a, a good job if you have a clean, a clean image. Um, you can also, so, uh, here I use, um, to, just to check, I use um, ni, ni, uh, so the plotting nylon um, to, to add the, the, the brain mask as edge here in the, over the first volume of the rest in state image. So um, another thing that we can do is to use uh, the anatomical image. So usually when you do functional MRI, you also uh, acquire uh, an anatomical image. It's also called uh, T1 weighted or MP range. And it, it's the, 
in, in, uh, MRI modality that gives you the best resolution and tissue contrast, so it allows you to do anatomical seg segmentation from the brain, and you can use that information over the functional image. So, for example, I'm showing here uh, um, of an, an anatomical image from the co COBRE data set. And um, I would have to register this image to the functional image to, to, um, to work uh, with the segmentations that I do here in the functional image. Uh, th there are some registration algorithms uh, with uh, NiPy, NiPy tools, but I use other other tools from well, they run in MATLAB. But um, another step, important step, is is smoothing. Since the, these images are so noisy, uh, it's important to do to smooth to smooth them and. Well, Nylearn gives you a very nice function, which is called a smooth image, and you can, uh, so this, you give the file, so this is the motion corrected uh, filtered image, and you give the, the full width half maximum, so it's the size of the, the kernel to, to do the smoothing in millimeters. And now let's see how the smoothing, the smooth image looks like. So it's black, and well, sometimes it happens. I'm going to change the contrast, and now it looks a little bit better. And you can see uh, the the function. So it's a rest, the the resting state part of the functional image. So connectivity analysis. So connectivity analysis is uh, when you pick this uh, filtered smooth uh, functional image and you select different regions, usually anat different anatomical images. You extract the signal of each of these regions and you calculate the covariance between this, uh, these uh, regions. So a covariance of the rest in state data between these regions. And for that, you usually need a, a brain atlas. So an atlas gives you uh, regions in the brain that are anatomical or functional um, relevant. So Nylearn in the datasets uh, soup module has, for example, the fetch atlas Harvard Oxford function, which allows you to, to get a nice a nice um, atlas. So down there I'm showing the regions of these atlas. And you can use each of these regions to, to perform connectivity analysis. Um, so Nylearn is a very nice, it's very well documented tool. Um, so he, mm -hmm. So, uh, it uses scikit-learn uh, to perform the covariance measure, and uh, here, here is a here is a connectivity matrix. So, in each in each uh, 
pixel of the image, you have a, a covariance measure between the different regions, every other region of the of the brain, of the atlas that you chose. And uh, it also has a, a tool to plot the, con the connections between the regions. So this is very used to, to, per to compare different types of patients, um, subjects in different um, states. So there's another very interesting thing about a resting state is that it was it has been discovered that uh, the brain during rest, uh, uh, it has connected regions that work uh, when you are resting. So these are these are the most the most uh, famous ones. Um, people are still uh, doing research over this this kind of um, this kind of. Uh, exp knowledge and um, so these are different areas of the, the brain that are known to work together when you are resting and you can use this for example as well to, to, to check how well it works in patients with Alzheimer's uh, and other neurodegenerative diseases. So with an I learned the composition uh, you can perform um, ICA, which is independent component analysis, um, they have a, a, it's called canonical ICA, and also DICT learning, and you can use this to extract uh, these resting state uh, components of the functional image. So yeah, this didn't work. But um, so for so how I do it, I import from Nylearn the composition, Dick learning. I have to set the number of components I want to extract from the from the resting state image. So basically, this well, um, so these are the most significant. Uh, uh, components of the of the of the whole volume of the whole uh, resting state volume, and you can well so so apply this to your data and you get the components. Uh, so here there's a very nice example from Nylearn. So this is uh, once I, I extract this these components, I plot the I plot them over a, a template, and these are the areas where this component is present. So I get different um, these different resting state networks. So well, um, I I'm using NiPipe a lot. Um, I'm I'm I, I'm building some, uh, a module that's called Pipes, which has m many of these uh, tools that I showed showed you. They are easy to use with a, a big data set, so you can configure pipes to run over your data set, and it has it has workflows to different types of images. And uh, yeah, that's 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 all. If you have any question, you need any help with this kind of analysis, please uh, come to me. I'm I'm happy to help. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Alexander. <coughs> Do you have any questions? Thank you for your talk. I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, you showed at the beginning of the talk some algorithms to smooth images and stuff like that. Uh, I wanted to know if there's something specific about brain images that, for instance, can go to scikit image or other like more generic uh, image processing libraries. And the other one is that I've heard that MATLAB, for instance, is very used to do image processing. 
And I would like to know how does all these tools compare to commercial alternatives? Okay, so the so there there is some well the specifics of this type of of images regarding uh, other norm. So, for example, brain do, doing brain image with scikit learn scikit image. Sorry. Um, so, for example, for uh, diffusion image, you need very specific uh, models uh, to fit to your data. Uh, for functional image, um, you could. Uh, so, scikit image is not really prepared for uh, for the. I mean, you can do it, but for example, you are working with chunks. For, so, for example, to do a smoothing. If you run smoothing with scikit image, um, for example, a smoothing you need to know the voxel size because I'm I'm working in millimeters, for example. Yeah, there there are some specificities that with scikit image is not uh, it's not it wouldn't be uh, practical, and uh, so yeah, MATLAB is very used. There there's, there are other tools that are uh, command line based uh, from different universities. The thing is that uh, if you want to work with this, I mean, basically you are doing research basically, and you need to publish. So, um, so if you want to publish, you have to use a tool that everybody knows. Otherwise, they are going. You are going to get a lot of critics from the reviewers. Yeah. So, for example, there's a very nice tool from. Uh, University College London, which is called Statistical Parametric Mapping, which works totally on MATLAB. It has a GUI, um, so it's easy to use. Uh, the good thing is that, for example, NiPipe has an interface for most of the useful things that SPM uh, offers. And um, yeah, uh, there's uh, there are many. It's another world. There's a, a lot of tools available to do this. Most of them are public. Uh, yeah. Other questions? I, I was wondering how uh, medical research, uh, software development, and uh, data algorithmic de development go on kind of, I, I mean, who, who goes first? Uh, uh, what's the relation of the, I mean, I guess there are different, of course, different professionalities and teams, but uh, how do they interact, uh, who drive the, the things forward, how everyone can do his own thing and push it to the other, how does it work? <laughs> does it work? Yeah. Huh? Does it work? <laughs> <Or> <laughs> So yeah, it's a multidisciplinary uh, field where you have uh, physicists, mathematicians, uh, you have psychologists, you have medical doctors, you, um, you have computer scientists. Um, uh, so it depends on the application, I would say. Uh, if you want to do, uh, if you are in a lab where they do uh, psychology tests, psychology experiments, mostly is a psycho as a, could be a physiologist who is leading the, the ideas or a psychologist. Um, medical doctors are there to, to check whether your, your data is saying something to them because they are the ones that know about uh, the diseases, the, the brain. Um, of course, in the end, I have to, I'm a computer scientist and I have to learn a bit of brain anatomy, um, understand a bit the diseases as well. Uh, but most, I would say computer scientists are the, are, are the, in the bottom. Of the <laughs> Thank you for the talk. Um, Actually, I was wondering why in this particular field you need so many tools. So, uh, in, in the beginning of your talk, you showed us different tools. Most, all of them are in Python. That's 
gorgeous, but why so many? Um, so yeah, uh, so M the MR scanner is a very flexible tool. Uh, you can set, you can configure it to run different types of measures from the brain, and each of these measures they are uh, they are one whole field of uh, research on its own. So you have diffusion, you have functional, you have anatomical imaging. So all these fields, they are, so all these modalities, uh, they are, they have different types of um, analysis processes. Thanks for your talk. Dif difficult to talk about computer science and neuroscience in one slot. Um, I'm wondering if you guys have any training, and if there is training, if you guys have developed any training specifically for scientists to get involved in this, rather than computer scientists who are trying to learn the, the science, so to speak. Well, um, I have been, well, I tried in May to, I'm doing uh, software carpentries, and I included a NiPipe, a NiPipe tutorial on, so half a day of NiPipe. And people enjoyed it, so because mostly because they know the tools that are under it, so the S, uh, MATLAB tools, the command line tools. So I wanted to show them how to use NiPipe because it's very useful. Uh, for now, that's it. I mean, I'm not paid to run a software carpentry or. In fact, I had to get some holidays, but yeah, it's something I enjoy doing. If there are no more questions, I have one. Uh, you mentioned a netless of connectivity, of brain activity. Uh, what does, what do the, the entries in this atlas represent exactly? Is it a special action that the body does? Or? Uh, sorry, can so there is an atlas of brain connectivity, brain activity? Uh, yes. Uh, if we take an entry in this atlas, like uh, is it, it, is, it would be, if I understand well, uh, some regions of the brain which would be active at the same moment? Uh, yes, so it's, uh, yeah, so it's how the, the different areas work together. When, when the so, for example, in connectivity, in resting state connectivity, you are measuring how synchronized are these regions. Okay, and then what does that represent? Can you infer that the body is doing a, a special movement or thinking? No, it's, it's resting. So the subject is uh, quiet in the scanner, uh, but you can you can see. For example, how, how in Alzheimer's disease patients, uh, some areas, they are, not, they are disconnected, They're, or the connection is different or lower. Um, yeah, uh, this is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Still one question? So the last one. Uh, have you had your brain scanned? Many times. <laughs> Did it look familiar or? <laughs> it looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have, I do have it here. So that is one of my brain scans. So this, this is me inside and this is me outside. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alexander.